Ahoj, this is Denka. iPhone 16 Pro has many new features, including this new camera control button. In this tutorial, let me explain everything when it comes to photography, including the best camera settings. Let's press the camera controller. That is the official name of this button to open up the camera app. When you press again, you'll take a photo. If you press and hold, you will record a video. Once you stop holding the button, it will stop recording. This is certainly a fast way to take photos and record a video. If you half press, you will be able to control zoom. Just swipe left and right to be able to zoom in and out. If you half press, it's not always going to take you to zoom control. Let me show you what I mean. If you double soft or half press, you will open up the menu with the rest of the controls. Exposure, depth, zoom, cameras, styles, and tones. Let's select, for example, exposure. If you are filming on a bright sunny day, you might want to bring the exposure a bit down, minus 0.3 or even to minus 0.7. Now, when I close the camera app and open the camera app again, let's half press the camera controller because exposure was the last setting I was changing. It's going to open just that. Before I give you tips for the rest of the controls, let me show you how you can customize this camera control button. There are two places where you can customize this control. First, let's just go to phone settings and then go to the accessibility section. Scroll down to the physical and motor where you can find camera control. Hit that. First of all, if for any reason you need to disable this button, you can do it here. Right now, when you light press, you will access extra controls. You have another option to also enable long swipe to do the same. Light press force can be also changed from default to lighter or firmer. Once you test it, you will see this cool animation with the light right on the screen. Double light press speed can be also changed from default to slow or slower. I'm going to leave it on default. Let's go back to accessibility and then back to settings. Here, let's go lower to camera settings, the second place where you can change more things. Right at the top, we have a system setting camera control. Let's go to the camera. If you find that you accidentally open the camera too often when you click, you can change it to double click. Further down is where you can completely change what the button will do. Instead of opening the camera app, you can change it to coach scanner or launch Instagram, magnifier, and disable it completely to do none, nothing. Let's just keep it on camera. By the way, give it a thumbs up if you are getting value out of this video and consider subscribing as the next tutorial, 16 Pro tutorial, is all about video. It's time to leave the settings completely and explore more camera controls with this new button. I've covered exposure, so let's double press to pull out more controls and swipe to the next one that is depth. From now on, you don't have to go to portrait mode to take portrait photos. It is also available here if you use this button. Quick tip, if you have the time to play with the settings here, as you can. The lower the number, the more blur you will see in the background. However, you might end up with smudged edges if you push it too low. What I personally do is keep it at 2.8. Then once I take the photo and I go to the gallery, pull it up, select what I want in focus, zoom in, and then adjust the f-stop so the edges around the subject are nice and sharp. Let's double press to get to the next control, and that is zoom. Simply swipe left and right to zoom in. Just be careful when you zoom in too much, as the image will get pixelated. If you want the best quality, go to the next mode and choose the right camera instead. 0.5 times, one time, two times, and five times. Move yourself closer or further away to get the best quality. Speaking of a photo quality, chances are that if you take a photo right now, the photos will be 12 megapixel size. Let's go to the camera settings and explain the camera formats. Scroll down, make sure Pro Raw and Resolution Control is enabled, 
and below hit the pro default setting. There are two things you can do. If you are not a photographer who films to edit photos in programs such as Lightroom, prefers an easier format, but wants to get the best quality possible, enable HEIF Max up to 48 megapixel as pro default. Now, when you open up the native camera app, you will see this HEIF Max icon. When it is crossed, it is disabled. So you're still taking only 24 megapixel photos. If you enable this, you will be taking 48 megapixel photos that will give you higher quality and more details. You will certainly see it when you zoom in. I have to let you know that if you enable the HEIF Max icon, you will disable live mode. So you have to make a decision here. Do I need live mode photos or do I want higher quality in photos? Let's go back to camera settings. For those who want the raw format to take it to the next level, editing the photos in Lightroom, let's change it to Pro Raw Max. You might also notice Pro Raw format setting below. JPEG lossless is most compatible and I would suggest keeping it there. JPEG XL, as they explain here, offers improved compression over JPEG, resulting in smaller file sizes. It is available on iOS 17 and Mac OS 14 and later. Now, when I open the camera app, I see the RAW Max icon instead of HEIF Max icon. The same thing here. If you enable RAW Max, live photos will be disabled. Let's return one more time to the camera control button and explore two more controls. The first one is styles. When you swipe left and right, you can choose from many of the styles offered. If you want to go back to default, make sure you go back to standard. The second control and the last control is tone. The easy way to think about this is if you swipe right, the image is going to get darker. If you swipe left, the image will get lighter. Styles and tones are very basic with the control button. You will get way more options if you tap this new icon on the screen instead. Now you can switch between all these styles. Let's go back to standard. Here you will see this new square below. If you drag the middle dot to the left, the image will get more gray. If you move it to the right, the image will get more colorful. If you move it up, it will get brighter. And if you move it down, it will get darker. So you can just drag all around to find the right look. When you move it around, you can see the tone and color numbers change at the top. If you want to go back to default, you can reset it here with this icon. If you go to other styles, you will notice one more control and that is this slider below. This is just to control the intensity. If you slide it left, it will be less intense. If you slide it right, the effect will be more intense. But guess what? You can do all this before you take the photos or after you take the photos because everything can be changed in photo editing and you can also copy and paste all the edits to all the photos you select with one click. Let's open up this photo, for example, and hit edit icon. The first thing you can change are the styles here. So you can see you don't have to do that actually before taking the photos. You can change it all here and also adjust the tone and strength. This photo was taken in live mode. So the next icon lets you choose the main key photo. Simply drag and confirm. Let's hit the adjust icon. Let's hit the out of feature first to see what look we are going to get. This feature allows you to adjust the look further with the slider. Let's hit the auto icon to go back to original as I want to edit the photo myself. Let's just adjust the exposure. You always want to make sure the highlights are not too bright and blacks are not too black, crushed. Brilliance will pretty much brighten up the image or make it darker. Highlights you can adjust separately as well as shadows. When you use contrast, just go slightly. Small changes make a big impact. iPhone images already have enough contrast to begin with. Brightness will make the whole image lighter or darker. Black points controls black. You can make black lighter or darker. 
saturation will make everything more colorful, but if you have people in the shot, be careful as the skin will be more orange. To avoid that, use vibrance control instead that doesn't affect skin tones. Warmth will warm up the image a bit more. It will give you yellow, orange tone, or cool down the image, it will give you more blue tones. Tint will give you more magenta tones if you slide right, or green tones if you slide left. If you find that the image you have looks too green, you can basically fix it here by sliding it a bit right to magenta. Sharpness I wouldn't use as much, as the iPhone already takes sharp enough images, but the option is here. Definition brings more details in the image. Noise reduction is great if you take photos in low light and end up with noise in the photos. You can reduce it here. Last one is vignette. If you like that look, you can add that to your photos. The next icon is a crop tool that lets you improve the framing of the photo. The last AI tool here is clean up. First, the photo gets analyzed and shows what objects you can remove. You cannot remove other objects in the photo. Now that I am done with this photo, I can hit the three dots at the top right corner and copy edits. Below, I will select what edits I want to copy, slide to another photo, hit those three dots and paste edits, or I can go to the library, select several images, hit the three dots at the bottom and paste edits to all these photos. Are you ready for camera settings when it comes to photography? There are some new features. Let's go to settings again and hit the camera. Camera control has been already explained. Photographic style lets you now fully customize the look of your photos the way you like it. Once you hit that, you will select four favorite photos you took on your phone and follow all instructions here. Let's go back to camera settings. As this is a photography tutorial, let's scroll down to get more photography settings. Formats were explained earlier. Let's go to preserve settings. Every time you're going to close and open up the native camera app, everything will be reset to default unless you enable these. I have pretty much everything enabled. Camera mode will let you use last mode such as video instead of going to photo first. Controls menu will pull up the last camera tool used instead of showing the list of camera tools. Photographic style will use the last used style. It is not going to go back to default. Creative control will use the last aspect ratio or lighting setting. Depth control will use the last setting in photo. Portrait mode. Macro photos can now be taken also with the main camera camera. So if you enable this, it's not going to go back automatically to shooting macro photos with an ultra wide angle camera. The next setting are exposure adjustment, night mode, portrait zoom, action mode, pro raw and resolution controls, Apple ProRes and live mode. It is best to go through every single setting and think if this is something you want to go back to default or use the last setting. Let's go back to settings. If you enable use volume up for burst, you will be able to take burst photos as you press and hold the volume button. Scan QR code and show detected text you want to have enabled to be able to use it. Grid level I suggest turning on. Mirror front camera and view outside of the frame I recommend off. If you enable the mirror front camera and take photos with selfie and rear cameras, once you mix the photos, the background will Will be flipped. The view outside of the frame will make it harder to compose the image as it is a bit distracting. Let's go to a fusion camera. When you have these two settings enabled, when you press the main camera, you can switch between additional lenses. 24, 28 and 35. By default, it is always set to 24. If you prefer 28 or 35 as a default, you can change it here. Let's go back. Portraits in photo mode I have enabled as now you can take portrait photos not only in portrait mode. Once you take a photo of a person, dog or cat in photo mode, you can then apply a portrait effect. I have Prioritize faster shooting as I prefer quality over speed. If you enable this, it will take photos faster, but it might lower the image quality. Lens correction is good to have enabled to avoid lens distortion 
And lastly, if you don't want a macro control icon displayed in the app, you can turn it off. I have it on as yes, I like the macro control to be able to take macro photos. Give it a thumbs up if you found this video helpful and don't forget to subscribe for more. As I told you before, tutorial about video on iPhone 16 Pro is coming up next. And perhaps, meanwhile, you can check out one of these next. See you there. Ciao. Ahoy.